<coughs> and we are live. Welcome for this weekly live stream on the greatest and on the greatest and latest news in Ethereum and DeFi. I'm Julian, your host, and on Eat the Blocks, I teach blockchain development. Hi to everybody in the chat. Hi, Eric, Sujan, Chuen, IMF, George, Blano, Sagar. So, a quick announcement tomorrow at 11 p.m. UTC plus 8, we are going to do our next live training on smart contract security. So, this time it will be on smart contract audits. So, smart contract security this is the highest paid skill in crypto, but especially inside this niche, the niche in the niche, the absolutely highest paid skill in crypto is to do smart contract audits. You can make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year make doing this. Unfortunately, there is absolutely nobody that teaches you how to do this. Well, we're going to have a pro that teach us. So it's going to be Suhel, who is a professional security expert in cybersecurity. He's been in cybersecurity for many, many years. He's already done a live training previously with us. It was a huge success. And for this live training, we are almost completely booked. So if you want your seat, make sure to book it now. Um, and after the replay will be, uh, will be available. Uh, so let me copy paste the link in the chat. Um, all right, so we are going to continue with the price of Ether. So that was a bad week of Ether. Unfortunately, we could not stay above the support at $2,000. Uh, yeah, we're back uh, at the territory below that. So uh, that's not great. But you have to know that Generally, during summer, this is a time of a lot of uh, uncertainty in crypto. So, you know, July, August can be very volatile, but it's not really meaningful. And, you know, after everybody is back from a holiday in September, serious things can start again. So probably uh, that we're going to see some uh, some rally uh, in the summer. So don't freak out if during if during this summer uh, it, it decreases a lot uh, at, at during the fall, it's going to be much better. Um, all right, so then in terms of gas price, so we are still uh, we're still very low, a slightly increase, increase, but yeah, I mean, generally speaking, it, it stayed pretty low. So the Ethereum blockchain is more uh, usable these days. And so last week we had a big announcement for the the London mainnet fork. So this is the next big upgrade of Ethereum. There was already a successful upgrade on Testnet. And so now the code of the Ethereum client was updated to officially schedule the upgrade. So uh, it's going to uh, happen on this block, which is roughly between August 3 uh, and, and the 5th. So it's going to be uh, very, very soon. And of course, that's going to be uh, bullish for Ether. And in terms of the big upgrade, so there is this nice infographic here that uh, explain everything. Um, so basically the main upgrade is EIP uh, is, uh, where is EIP 1559? How comes it's not there? 1559, uh, uh, how comes you're not there? Okay, well, I'm, I'm I'm still, I'm um, why? Oh yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> that was the first, I was like, what? Yeah, so EIP1559, this is the, the main change, but there are still some others. Um, all right, so next news. This is uh, a news about a documentary that's gonna be done on Ethereum uh, featuring uh, Vitalik Buterin, and uh, they've already raised uh, $2 million for this documentary, which is uh, above their their goal. So it was uh, crowdfunded, so it's going to be called Ethereum, the uh, Infinite Garden. Um, so it's, it's going to be cool, really, to get the words out. You know, like most crypto, most uh, the mainstream media, and most of the the public is always focused on Bitcoin, but we need to shift the narrative and uh, and repeat the word Ethereum, 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 so that people understand that it's what they need to focus on. Um, some news from. Ethereum name service ENS. So ENS is a service of Ethereum that will allow you to attach a name to an address exactly like the DNS uh, on the internet. And 
So uh, they, we had some uh, statistic for ENS, and so we have about uh, it grew about 10,700 addresses in June, and so now we have about 300 million dollar attached to uh, to ENS. And the more, so on the one hand, it's good that we have uh, so much money attached to it, but at the same time, it also make it more prone to attacks because now there is more money uh, on the table. So. Um, Probably that with time the ENS service is going to become uh, more and more expensive as as it's attached to as it's secure more and more money. Um, then we have some news from Ave, the founder of Ave, which has uh, tweeted that uh, is uh, is interested in building a Twitter on Ethereum, and this comes after a remark of Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, that said that he wants to build a uh, a new sort of a DeFi platform built uh, built on Bitcoin. So, I mean, I'm not sure if uh, if Jack Dorsey is uh, is serious, but uh, but I do believe that the founder of, of Ave is serious. So maybe this is going to be a, a proposal uh, for their for their DAO. And I do think one of the the big uh, really untapped potential of the blockchain is really social network. Uh, we we only had a few attempts at this, so. We uh, we had a steam it. I don't know if you guys remember uh, that was during the, the previous bull run in 2017. Uh, that was basically a sort of decentralized medium where um, where author were paid based on the number of visits on each of their their article, and it got a lot of of success at at the very beginning. Sometimes you could make like 200 bucks if you if you wrote an article, but after uh, it kind of uh, started to be uh, forgotten. But I think this is really a shame because like right now, you know, we, we have DeFi. This is obviously the main application of blockchain. And then we have we have NFT uh, and game, the, the second biggest application. But I think the, the, the another another axis for development is social media. And so far we were we were blocked by the by the high fees. But now with all the work that is being done on scalability, all the, the layer two scaling solution, maybe we start we start to be closer at the point where we can actually think of uh, developing a social network on on blockchain um yeah um all right so next some news from a uh, a uh, a defi protocol called superfluid that uh, raised 9 million dollars so that's basically what we call a streaming protocol that allow you to uh, to pay people, but in a stream instead of just being paid at the end of the month, you are getting paid continuously. So it's really a big break breakthrough um, in DeFi. Um, then, then, then some news from Connex that just raised a twelve million dollars. So Connex is a interoperability project it basically connects the different l2 scaling solution on ethereum so uh for example polygon optimism uh, etc and and as we have more and more liquidity that moves to this l2 chain that's going to be very useful because uh, if people have to come back to l1 before changing to another l2 it's going to be a, a big issue it's going to be very costly so connex is going to solve this very important problem uh then we're going to continue with the market cap of DeFi. So a small decrease this week, uh, 55. So yeah, I mean, we are hovering just above a 50 billion. Yeah, it's been a while like this. Um, and in terms of the number of Ether locked, so it keeps going up. So actually the decrease in absolute value here in, in, in dollar values because of the decrease of the price of uh, ether but yeah i mean you can see that more and more ether is being locked uh, in the system and uh, in terms of ranking so ave is still the number one the only protocol above 10 billion instadap solid uh, number two uh, uniswap uh, is still quite far far away it used to be number one uh, sushi swap also a way way after uh, uniswap um, and yeah, surprisingly, Curve Finance now is above Uniswap, uh, but it's probably not going to last because really Uniswap V3 to me is uh, absolutely superior to Curve Finance. Um, then, then, then uh, some news from the DeFi coin. So the biggest winner and loser of the week. So empty said dollar here, uh, biggest increase with a uh, 50%. Um, then, 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 then we have 
uh, we have Olympus, um, it's Olympus DAO plus 40% uh, almost, uh, YFII, so plus 13%, small increase, uh, Bella protocol, um, small small increase as well. And, uh, and finally, uh, Harvest Finance here, uh, yeah, almost nothing actually. Where when I checked just before, it was plus ten percent, but now it's almost come back to zero. So they announce uh, their V two, but apparently there is not much effect, unfortunately. Uh, okay, so then uh, for the losses, so we also have a lot of loser uh, this week. Um, we have we have the boring DAO token, but this is the the old one, so I don't think it's very relevant. Uh, Thor Chain, I think there was a big hack if I remember well. Uh, Alpha Finance, uh, Instadap. So Instadap recently rise a lot. So yeah, I mean it's, it's still very volatile. Um, bounce out on this protocol. Synthetics minus thirty percent, um, etc. So really a lot of winner, a lot of uh, winner, but a lot of loser also this week. Very volatile week for uh, DeFi token. Uh, then let's check the dashboard for crypto fees. So yeah, Ethereum is still far ahead of other blockchain like Binance Spot Chain. Uh, Uniswap V3, this is the top earning protocol across all blockchains. So that's always interesting to compare this figure to the actual market cap because really we, you, we, can, we can think that um, we can be sure that long term the price of a token should be correlated to the fee that the protocol is able to earn. So by this metrics, I do believe that the token of Uni is really uh, undervalued. Um, Ave really deserve its uh, its place um, for the, the the top market cap. Also, I mean, uh, it top it deserve its place in the top uh, market cap of of DeFi and Ethereum because you also earn a lot of fee. And if you check uh, Quick Swap, also uh, makes quite a lot of money. And if you check the protocol on Binance Smart Chain, they are far below this. So, for example, Pancake Swap, which has way more users than Uniswap in terms of the fees that are collected, is way, way below. Uh, do we even see it here? Uh, let me see. Uh, do we even see it here? I'm not even sure. Where are you, Pancake Swap? Yeah, so uh, we should see it somewhere. It's weird we don't see it. Um, anyway. Anyway, uh, let's keep going. So we're going to continue with a specific news of DeFi project. And there was Uniswap that announced their deployment on Optimism. So Optimism, which is one of the main alternatives to a Polygon for all the L2 scaling solution. So now you can use Optimism to uh, deposit, trade and provide liquidity. Uh, they've been working on this integration for a very long time. Um, so... So now we have Uniswap on Optimism. Uh, do we have Uniswap on Polygon? I'm not sure yet, but uh, it's definitely gonna help a lot to have all this DeFi protocol that moves to a, a L2 scaling solution. Um, then, then, then uh, we have a new integration, a new partnership between um, Yearn, uh, Yearn and Yearn Yield and uh, Rebound. So. If I understand correctly, this allows you to do some uh, some yield farming by stacking by stacking some uh, rewards. So it's a pretty pretty advanced trade. Uh, so it's not for a beginner, but you can check the the article on the blog of Ribbon Finance if you're interested. Um, then some news from uh, Cream Finance. So Cream Finance, which is a lending protocol, as a uh, as basically provided a um, a line of uh, a, a credit line from the iron bank to please a dao so this is this is two dao this is the first time we have this a loan between dao um then we have some super cool news from shapeshift so shapeshift um if you're a newcomer you probably never heard of shapeshift this was this is this uh, was one of the first uh, very old crypto project. Uh, I think they were created maybe in, in 2015 or 2016. So that was one of the first projects that allow you to trade crypto in a decentralized way. It, it was not a DEX. It was another another technology. And there was a time when they, they had a lot of traction. But I think they received a little bit too much uh, regulatory uh, scrutiny and they did not like it. So 
they started to uh, take the route of uh, decentralization and they announced that the corporate entity is going to dissolve into a DAO. So this is the very first time we hear this. We have we have this legal entity that's just going to disappear and dissolve into a decentralized entity. And so all the all the people who hold some uh, some token on shape, shape shift, this is going to be uh, uh, moved to uh, to the DAO. But this is the first time we we hear this so super interesting to uh, to see how it's going to work out for them is it going to be better as a dao or on the contrary are they going to regret it we will see uh, then uh, okay no we already covered this super fluid um then some news from from the phantom wallet so this is a a DeFi, a DeFi wallet uh, on the which currently support the Solana blockchain, and they are, have raised nine million dollar by uh, A16Z. So A16Z, this is one of the most uh, prestigious uh, invest um, investment fund in in uh, I mean a VC uh, in the Silicon Valley. So you know when you raise money, it's not just what matters. It's not just how much you raise, but also from whom you raise it, because when you have this guy, very famous like A16Z, who invests in your company, of course this is a signal that is sent to the market. And after, if you want to raise even more money, that means there won't be no problem uh, because you have this huge bullish signal of uh, A16Z. Um, then, 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 uh, then some news from. Certic, so Certic is a company that does a smart contract audit and they raised $37 million. So it's really a, a big raise and um, they're going to uh, double their team. So currently they, ha they ha are at a 100 employee and so they're going to, uh, to double this. So with a lot of demand uh, for smart contract auditors, um, then then, then, then we're going to continue with the DeFi hacks. So first there was an exploit for the bridge of, uh, of any swaps, so any swap. This is a project to convert your crypto be between across blockchain and they were hacked for $8 million. Um, then some hacked from a uh, Thor chain that, uh, lost almost $8 million. Um, and uh, and they offer a bounty to the hacker if it uh, if it returns the fund. Uh, then and then some hack from uh, Bondly Finance. So that was a minting exploit, which means someone managed to mint way more token that uh, they should have been able to, and so six million dollars were lost. And that was um, that was done using the admin account. So, you know, this is always very weird when you have a protocol that is hacked with the admin account. People always wonder, uh, is it, uh, is this the team that uh, hacked themselves? So it's not great for Bondly Finance and their token, uh, dropped by more than 60% following the hack. Um, then, then, then we're going to talk, we're going to talk, uh, NFT. So, um, so here we have a matrix on NFT. We can see the secondary price of, uh, of the last 1,000 sales, and, uh, and actually it has uh, it has increased a lot. And here you have some other metrics uh, per per project, per collection, or per NFT marketplace. So here, super rare, uh, average art, art block. This is a collection name. Average CryptoPunk, uh, MeBeats, uh, Hashmask, and see an average bold ape. So this one I've been doing super well. Uh, recently um, then 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 we are going to continue with a news from superware which is uh, one of the top nft marketplace and so superware they uh, already introduced an um, artist royalty so they they allowed artists to uh, to earn money for secondary market but now they introduce a, another kind of royalty, which is called collector royalty. So basically, if you are among the first buyer of an NFT in the secondary market, and you, um, and and basically you're going to receive. Let me let me scroll down to the chat because there is a chat that explains this. So uh, basically, the first buyer they will receive a share of the royalty for the next few sell. Um, so. 
that basically that encourage um, the the first buyers of the NFT to help for for the next sale, so that that helps for the secondary market. So this is the first time I I heard this concept, and Superware is really doing a lot of work to fluidify their secondary market for NFT because you see like having a good secondary market this is really the key for the NFT markets to to work and this can really totally uh, expand the size of the NFT market a lot if people can can know that if they invest in an NFT there is a liquid secondary market then you're going to have way more way more trading uh for for NFT and it's going to be awesome um then uh, we have this awesome report of Dab Radar on Axie uh, Infinity, which is currently one of the most successful uh, blockchain games. So they, they game totally exploded recently by uh, over uh, eight. Uh, they the uh, governance token AXS grew by more than eight hundred percent during the past months, uh, according to uh, to CoinGecko. And so, so yeah, I mean, if you are in NFT, uh, check out Axie Infinity because uh, this is where we have all the excitement uh, at the moment. Uh, another game that is uh, being very successful at the moment is Crypto Blade, um, and the number of players increased by 200%. So the number of users of a protocol, this is really a metrics that you, you have to follow because usually this is correlated to the increase in price of, uh, of their token. Um, then, then, then... Uh, we're going to continue with the enterprise blockchain and the regulation. So we have a news from a Grayscale, which is the largest investment fund for uh, for crypto. So investment fund, they don't invest in, uh, basically, uh, they, they don't, they're not VC, but they, they invest in, uh, in token directly and, and uh, in crypto asset. And so they started a fund um, on, uh, on DeFi token. Uh, and it's going to be based on a new DeFi index produced by CoinDesk uh, Trade Block Division. So uh, basically, if you want to invest in DeFi in a very simple way, you don't want to select yourself all the different sub projects, then maybe you can check out the different uh, DeFi index. Um, then, 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 then um, we have some news from Binance, some bad news from Binance. You know, it's been a really bad streak of bad news from Binance the, the past few weeks. Like every week we have more negative news. I hope it, it's going to end soon. Um, so they Binance said that they're going to stop supporting um, purchasing tokens linked to stock. And it's only three months after they, they started uh, this new offering because there were many regulatory bodies across the world that started to issue warning and say, hey man, uh, you start to get a little bit too close to centralized finance, so uh, you, you cannot really do this. But not all hope is lost because we can still do it in a decentralized way. So I don't know if you guys remember, but a couple of, uh, of months ago, I mentioned that uh, Wall Street Bets, was in street, which is a, a famous... Uh, subreddit for for traders or um, for a stock market. Wall Street Bet was introducing a, a DAO, basically to that allow you to invest in a basket of of stocks uh, of um, of stock trading outside of the blockchain. But you can tr you basically can invest in this in this DAO on the blockchain, and they do this by uh, by using some oracle. So now we can still have uh, basically the stock market in. In, in uh, on the blockchain, but it will be done in a decentralized way. And probably centralized exchanges will not risk to do this because this is just too dangerous for them. Um, then we have some news from uh, Alibaba, so which is uh, one of the the biggest um, e-commerce website uh, in in China. So sorry, uh, Alibaba is the, is the mother company. So uh, the website is, is Taobao. Um, and um, and basically they are making a, a maker festival. So this is uh, some some special event for for their merchant, uh, for their for for developers, and it's going to include NFT art. Um, and also we have some news from the the near protocol, which is working with uh, with uh, Web3 Games. So Web3 Games, this is a Chinese uh, a Chinese gaming firm on blockchain, and. Uh, and the, so Near Protocol is uh, partnering with all these companies to 
to sell an NFT, which is uh, which is related to, to real estate. Um, so I'm a bit surprised to see some uh, positive news about blockchain in, in China because recently there was this huge crackdown on the miners' uh, activity in China. So it's good to see that there's there's still some people doing something. Um, then, 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 then. Uh, okay, first I miss uh, miss a news here. Yes, so we have a news from El Salvador which uh, announced that. They will launch, uh, the, the, the government will launch their own crypto uh, for consumers. And um, yeah, so it's basically going to be another central bank uh, digital currency. Um, and, and that's interesting because recently El Salvador also announced measures very supportive of uh, Bitcoin. So, you know, we, all, we were always under the impression that if central bank were working on their own CDBC, it means they would be against against the other crypto but apparently not for uh, El Salvador um, then still in the CDBC uh, domain so we have some news from the European Central Bank which is uh, preparing for a digital uh, euro so they, we heard a couple of uh, announcements already uh, in the past few weeks so we have one more statement uh, of, a, of an official that uh, give a hint that they are, they are working on this um, then China, which is also working on their own CDBC, so they published the white paper of their uh, of their ECNY, so their, their CDBC, and uh, this white paper confirms that there will be smart contract program programmability. Um, so this is this is very important because you know, like as blockchain developer, we, we worry sometimes we because we are. Uh, basically, uh, we mostly focused on, on Ethereum, so public uh, decentralized blockchain, and we wonder, okay, well, in the future, when there will be all this CDBC, what if the central banks decide to, to, to ban uh, all, the, all the public networks? Well, first of all, I don't think this is going to happen because this is almost uh, impossible to enforce. But even in the worst case scenario, uh, if this happened, all these central banks, probably a lot of them, they're going to reuse the technology of all the public networks or... Uh, um, mainly ethereum so all the smart contract skills that you learn now on ethereum this will be transferable to many other part of the blockchain industry including cdbc so your experience as smart contract developer will be very welcome by the central bank and all the entities that are going to build on top of this digital currency so really you are not wasting your time um then we have some news uh, from the SEC uh, that uh, that settled some charges he had against an uh, an ICO. So yeah, recently we haven't heard a lot of action of the SEC against ICO. It was really a thing uh, a thing of the past. You know, like uh, one two years ago there was a lot of action, but now ICO pretty much dead. So yeah, there was just an aftermath of some uh, some procedure that started uh, before. Um, then 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 we have some news from uh, russia so a crypto industry association in russia launched a project to attract some uh, crypto mining firm in their country uh, after the great uh, um, after all the, the bad news from china because now you have all these miners in china who are uh, who are searching for for the next desti destination so you have this huge migration out of china now so you have different countries that try to uh, compete uh, for the attention of these uh, miners. Um, then we have some uh, some news from Turkey, which uh, which start to uh, we are uh, which is going to introduce a regulation for a cryptocurrency, and this regulation will be uh, most mainly based on the regulation in uh, in Europe uh, in the US. So. It's always super important to follow what's happening in terms of regulation in Europe, especially in the US, because you have a lot of other countries that don't create their own regulation. They basically check, I mean, for, for financial stuff, they, they check what the US is doing and they basically uh, do the same. Um, then, then, then some news from, um, let me see, I think I, think I missed something here. Uh, I missed something. Okay, well, okay, I missed the tab, but basically that was a, there was a news from Malaysia. 
uh, that uh, that sees uh, 1,000 uh, Bitcoin miners that were basically um, that was some gang apparently that stole some electricity that was some doing some uh, Bitcoin mining and so that was the viral video that circulated on on YouTube where basically you can see the, this huge uh, this huge truck that is uh, basically destroying all these all these Bitcoin miners um, yeah so then 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 we have some news from PayPal so PayPal announced that they are increasing their limits for a customer a purchase of crypto to $100,000 per, per week and that is only in the US so if you are in other country you cannot uh, you cannot buy crypto on your PayPal account yet right now it's only the US that they are testing this um, and um, then 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 uh, we have some news from France so the regulator of uh, the of France, uh, the the regulator of financial market in France, the AMF, uh, basically suggested that the regulation on crypto should be done at the European level and not uh, at the national level. So actually, for crypto builders, uh, this is a good news because that means if you have to comply to uh, a crypto regulation in Europe. It will be done at the European level, not at the country level. So that will mean uh, less work to do. Uh, then some news for developers. So we're going to talk of Open Zeppelin, and Open Zeppelin just released an integration with Subgraph. So Subgraph, this is this project to easily read data from the blockchain, and so. Now, Open Zeppelin has released an NPM package that allow you to read from Subgraph uh, really easily. So that's super cool because Open Zeppelin has a big distribution across uh, developers. So it's probably going to increase a lot the adoption of uh, Subgraph. Um, and finally, here we have this interesting uh, code, uh, piece of code. So this is to a fee estimator that uses a new API of Ethereum, uh, ETH underscore fee history. And so basically you can estimate the, the fee after the London fork by, uh, by using this snippet. So probably it's going to be used mainly by library like, uh, like Web3 or, or Wallet. So probably you're not going to use it directly as a blockchain developer, but if you are curious, if you really want to see under the hood how it's going to work, you can check out the code. Okay, guys, so now we're going to do uh, the Q&A. So uh, very briefly, I mentioned once again, um, so tomorrow at 11 p.m. UTC plus 8, we're going to have another live training on smart contract security. And we're going to learn how to create smart contract audits. So this is the highest paid skill in crypto, absolutely highest paid skills. If you know how to do smart contract audits, I mean, you can make up to $200,000, $300,000 a year. So it's absolutely insane. Uh, this is not for beginners, I have to say. If you're beginners, don't start with this. We are really talking of the, the elite of blockchain developers. Um, and so we're going to have an expert in cybersecurity that's going to teach us this. Um, it's Suhel M. Sassi. He already did another live training on security with us and it went really well. So, uh, I mean, we almost completely sold that. So, yeah, if you are interested, I put the link in the chat. All right. Um, and now I'm going to scroll up and, uh, and check out the question. Okay, okay, so who do we have here? So we have um, Blaino, Saga, Mahuna, Ma, Mahunath, Muibi, Sujan, Tienshex, Blaino, Le Sphinx, Batman, Crypto Michael, uh, Artem, hey, um, do you answer Solidity Themes question? Hope you do. Uh, yeah, okay, you can ask your question, uh, Artem, uh, now, uh, if you're still here. <laughs> uh, Matthew, we have... Uh, um, Batman said, hey, what about the self-destruct devalue? Looks like gas token is dead. Oh, yeah. So, so Batman was referring to the uh, upcoming update in the, the London uh, hard fork. So there is an upcode self-destruct so that so far allow you to, uh, to destroy a, a smart contract. And basically, uh, you, because you, you, you reclaim some space in the blockchain, you, you have a refund. 
And so uh, the, the whole gas token system that allow you to, to, uh, to reduce your, your, your gas spending, this whole system is going to be dead uh, because of this. Yeah. So if you use gas token, you have to, you have to move to something else. Um, uh, Javier Roman, can I make Twitter running on USD? Yeah, you can try. Uh, I've seen in machine learning that they try to solve every problem using this new shiny tech and it's hard and and usually fail. Uh, yes, but for social media on blockchain, I think this is absolutely needed because when we start to see the, the crazy censorship on, on social media, this is really taking a, a bad direction, uh, at least for me. So, so I do think right now we, we, we are one of the big failure of blockchain is that we don't have any success on, on social media. So uh, I absolutely want to see some, some social media based on, on blockchain. Um, Ari Sichua, Hey man, um, Matthew, are you go going to talk about Thorback hack? Uh, yeah, very, very briefly, I mentioned it. Um, JS, um, GSJ, hey there, Julian, and Eat the Blocks Gang. Hey man, uh, Joe Biden, um, how do you think about the potential East and Dodge merge and Vitalik meeting with the top Dodge, Dodge dev on the 20th of this month? Um, I don't think much of it, you know, like Dodge, uh, it's been a joke since the, the beginning. I don't really know the, the point. Of the the meeting with uh, with Vitalik, maybe to do some some buzz on on Twitter. I, I really don't know about this. Um, what is your opinion on Polkadot and Facebook partnership? Um, yeah, uh, cool. Let us see if that can give some boost to Polkadot. So far, there, there wasn't much traction on on Polkadot. So yeah, it's good for them if that that can help us. But uh, yeah, not much to say on Polkadot. Um, Matthew, I foresee a problem with NFT coming up. Uh, really, what is this problem? Um, ah, nah, nah, nah. Um, man, man, Runas, uh, Dogcoin increasing its community support over the, the globe. Uh, Sanchez, M MJS, uh, hey there, you heard Avi is making a Twitter like platform. What is your take? Okay, I already mentioned this uh, before uh, in, the, in the live stream. I think. It's just a tweet from the, their CEO, but I don't know if, if he's serious. I don't know uh, they, if the community is interested. Maybe it's going to be a vote on the DAO. Um, Matthew, ideally, NFT metadata should be stored under a storage contract. Curious as to how many people aren't doing this. You don't need to. Uh, yeah, so metadata, um, yeah, it's what is being done right now. Uh, for example, if you have a, uh, a an image, you have the hash of the image uh which can be stored on the blockchain and the actual the actual image outside of the blockchain that's uh, that's one possibility you can have the the url of a server uh, stored uh, on the contract also uh jeremy hoser uh no more cdbc please yeah well unfortunately it's not really going uh, in this direction so yeah no 2021 they finally it's going to be the the year of cdbc uh uh, JV uh, Roman, uh, I think the problem is people think NFT are immortals, but they are hosted in some random thing. So maybe some NFT art could even be lost uh, this way. Actually, uh, NFT art, if if all the if the image is derived from all the data on chain, then no, nothing can can be lost. Um, see Yam Tanda, uh, th thank you, Julian. Uh, Moran, uh, JSG, Ethereum documentary featuring Vitalik Buterin raised 1000 is Yes, I, I mentioned this. Uh, Bags, hi Julian, how are you bro? Hey man, uh, Siam Tanda, I am mad at you Julian because you promised up to update the course last week. Okay, so uh, yeah, I think you, you're talking of the course on um, on on a profitable flash loan. So actually, uh, Batman is uh, helping us uh, on, on this. So normally we should have some some news in two weeks. So I'm very very sorry about this. I know I keep delaying, but I just realized uh, I I need some help. So now we help is uh, is on the way. Uh, so we should have the code ready in two weeks. The video uh, will need to wait a little bit more. But yes, we are working on this finally for for real. Um, Bax, uh, what you mean about vertical tree? Um, oh yeah, I know it's one of the the new um, research thing of uh, Vitalik, but I haven't really looked at this. Uh, George Kenishi, I've heard that Polybuni was hacked. Have you? No, I didn't check this hack, unfortunately. Uh, Moran Kurdistan, do you have information about Ripple Flare token? I don't know this token. Um, then, 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 
Uh, Marco Dot uh, thought on cool cats reaching a 0 0.9 east floor in a short amount of time. I don't know. Uh, I don't know this project. Uh, no. Um, Matthew, interested in spot contract security. Here are some tools. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you didn't finish your, your sentence, Matthew. Uh, quarters bid. Hey, man. Mark Anthony. Hey, man. Uh, also, Matthew is saying also learn Python. Uh, wh why should we learn Python, Matthew? Uh, H2, H2L soft. Yo, uh, from Paris. Hey, man. Uh, Grand Karpov, hi. Uh, quarters bit. What about SHIB? Uh, yeah, no, Shiba, uh, not much to say. And there was some activity, uh, some news a couple of weeks ago when they did the, the uh, airdrop to uh, Vitalik and he, and he burned it. But apart from this, uh, not much to say. Daniel Miller, how does staking BAP20 token work? It's not different from uh, ERC20 token. Uh, you lock them in a contract and then it's up to you to decide how much new token you want to create. Uh, Isham, exactly, Dodge uh, is a joke. Uh, yeah, uh, Artem Altufiev, here's my question on Solidity. Is it possible to make ETH account creation using only Solidity and front-end technology like generic public and private key? Okay, so generation of uh, account is done completely off-chain, it's completely decentralized. So you generate this with uh, with JavaScript and the blockchain is absolutely not involved. So there are some risk of collision, but uh, these risks are so low that it actually never happened. Uh, psychedelic Wizard, hey bro, is flashing with arbitrage and liquidity still profitable? Um, it's not more or less profitable than before. You still have uh, liquidator arbitrage and that, that still make uh, a lot of money. So this, uh, this hasn't changed. Uh, this is actually correlated to uh, liquidity. So every time the price change a lot, you have a lot of uh, arbitrage uh, and a liquidation opportunity. Uh, then, 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 uh, well, let me see, let me see. Uh, Platform Mango, what is your opinion on Cardano? Are you going to do a course on Cardano? Mm, maybe, but I haven't received a lot of uh, requests at the moment, so maybe, but not the priority. Uh, Grand Carpo. Julian, but your lifetime pies. Love you. Keep educating us. Awesome, Green Capital. Um, Ari Sichua. Hey, Julian, do you offer help for audit for audit uh, with your team? Um, uh, may, uh, you can. Um, okay. Uh, you can email Raphael at eattheblocks dot uh, Raphael at dot com. He's a uh, a member of my team that helps uh, with the with that kind of request. Um get like, hey Julian, normally where do you find those reliable sources on all the blockchain news? I was thinking to share all this info in my local language. I just go through the the different newsletter. I just pay attention to to Twitter and uh, and also I have someone to uh, help me, uh, Dan, uh, which uh, who is a, a member of my team. So that's a great job helping me every Monday. Uh, yeah, so it really takes a lot of time every week to, <laughs> to do this, basically. Uh, Isham Ahmad, uh, should I learn Solidity to write smart contract in Ethereum or Rust to write smart contract in Solana? Uh, if you're just getting started, definitely learn Solidity and Ethereum because uh, uh, that's uh, by far the, the, the biggest demand on the market. Solana is much more niche. It's still valid, but uh, I wouldn't make it... Um, this is not the priority if you're a beginner, really, uh, Isham. Uh, Matthew, uh, okay, is uh, answering to someone else. Um, soon, Julie, can you do a video course on MEV? Uh, maybe a live training. Um, if uh, maybe, maybe uh, it's a good idea, but uh, yeah, it's not easy to to find uh, to find good people to teach this. Um, MJS uh, thought on the Fox token based on Shapeshift uh, uh, decentralized. I wasn't aware of their their, their token. Um, but uh, I just think it's super cool to have this uh, this news of Shapeshift just dissolving into a DAO. I mean, this is <laughs> it's really very cyberpunk. Um, and probably we're going to see more of this in the future. Uh, uh, Aga080, Julian, any guidance on securing token farm against flash loan uh, exploit? Uh, wow. Uh, this is... This is... Okay, so you got to make sure that, for example, 
if if you use uh, if you in your DeFi project you, you use an on-chain oracle, uh, you're vulnerable to flash on attack. But if you use an off-chain oracle, so basically an oracle that doesn't change in intra-block but only change between block, then normally a flash loan cannot do anything to you. Uh, but I mean, I'm I'm just speaking a little bit too fast here, so <laughs> maybe there is uh, another uh, another thing I haven't thought about. But that's the main issue is with on-chain oracle. Um, Constantin, uh, hi Julian, what do you think about Masternode, please, in terms of pro profitability? Um, I mean, I, I think I lack con of context here. Uh, Masternode, uh, it really depends Masternode of, of which blockchain. So yeah, you really got to analyze this uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, I would just say some some people who run Masternode makes money, some other, some other not. So yeah, um, Matthew, um, Vitalik paper on MEV proposed separating block sequencer from a uh, block uh, block proposer. Okay, cool. So uh, maybe this can be merged in uh, Ethereum one, uh, and we don't have to wait for uh, Ethereum two. That would be really cool. Um, Mark, you thought on building on Polkadot Moonbeam? Uh, no, not much to say. I haven't I haven't studied much Polkadot, unfortunately. Uh, Thun Julie uh, saying then 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 uh, is making fun of me. Uh, yes, exactly, exactly. Um, uh, uh, then 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 uh, uh, Moran Kurdistan. Uh, when it the blocks token will be available to buy? I release the beast man. Okay, so me personally, I I do not uh, I do not handle at all the. The, the market of Ido blocks me. I just airdrop it for free. I, I don't sell the the Ido blocks token, of course. Uh, so if, if you were in the airdrop initially, well, you should have some. Otherwise, I do think this is listed on uh, on Pancake Swap. But again, I, I don't manage this. Uh, uh, oh yeah, by the way, some news from the ETB uh, for the ETB uh, token guys. So uh, we are um, we are doing a uh, we, we are doing a sort of a hackathon at the moment, so we are we're basically building a, an app to to make the vote with the the ETB token, um, and um, the so there are several teams that are working on this, and uh, the the winner, the 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 team that produced the best voting app will will have a reward of a one thousand dollars. So if you're interested in this, you can check out the. Uh, First, you can join the Facebook group of Eat the Blocks, and and second, you can check out in the GitHub repo of Eat the Blocks. Uh, there is a, a folder on the ETB project, and so I, I explain uh, I explain everything. So basically, now we're going to do this this project uh, regularly. I think we're going to do something like a one project a, a month, uh, and uh, and every week we do um, we do a Zoom call. Uh, for the the builders of the the current project, where we we exchange ideas, uh, what to build next, uh, if they have any uh, technical question for for the current project. So, yeah, check this out. If you experience, that might be interesting. If you're a beginner, it's probably too complicated. Um, then then then, uh, what do we have? What do we have? Uh, uh, no no no. Um, THX, I never thought Dogecoin was a, a scam. I don't think it's a scam. It's, it's just, just a joke. Uh, Constantin, uh, is it still possible to launch ICO in France or we should create an IEO? No, I, I think it's too late to launch an IEO anywhere. Uh, uh, sorry, an ICO anywhere. Uh, yeah, look at uh, initial uh, uh, DEX offering. And even then, like, make sure you have your, your lawyer, uh, everything, because now this is not 2017 anymore. You got to be careful. Um Ari is saying, uh, have a good evening. Yeah, same man. Thanks. Uh, Psychedelic Wizard will catch up to your profitable flash loan course soon, brother. You're awesome, bro. Keep it up. Thank you. Uh, Varun Dusan. Hi, is auditing similar to blockchain security? Yeah, it's basically um, when, you, when you learn blockchain security, smart contract audit, it's one of the, the top skill. It's like the niche in the niche, really. Uh, Platform Mango, when are you going to release an uh, advanced solidity course? Uh, I don't know. Uh, this course has been put uh, on hold because basically right now I'm delegating to, uh, to other teachers. Um, so instead of this, we might, uh, we probably will have a series on, uh, on live training. So for example, 
in advanced solidity the one of the section was on security well we do have two live training on security so yeah check out the the live training instead um grand cap of uh is it possible to pay more attention only to solidity and not master javascript web3 uh, ether so so you do have to to master a minimum of javascript and web3 uh because for example for for testing you you cannot just do solidity for testing you need to know some javascript some web3 but but you can focus most of your effort on on solidity maybe it can be like 80 percent of your effort on solidity and, and 20 percent uh, uh on the rest uh and then and in general it pays more when you focus on smart contract instead of the front end because this is this there are very few people who are skilled in smart contract um you, you'll find a lot of, of uh, entrepreneurs maybe they took a boot camp on javascript or on the front end uh so maybe they can do a little bit the front end but for smart contract they are always scared uh, and that's where you as a blockchain developer you you can really realize your your full value when you are being very rare on the market uh j jsj gsj muchas gracias bro see you next time see ya man uh kilian mongi uh okay so is uh i'm translated uh, because this is in french uh, i'm watching your course since a couple of weeks think thanks for this precious information uh thanks man um Aga uh, 080, thank you so much. Chuan Ketlai, thank you. Uh, Devanshu Sega, how to contact for business inquiry or collaboration? So you have my email uh, at the end of the description. Uh, Majunas, uh, thanks man. Meet you soon with brand new update. Awesome. Uh, Isham, if you learn Solidity, will it help in writing smart contract using other languages? Um, yeah, because you will... If you learn Solidity, you 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 learn how smart contract works. But you know, don't worry too much about other smart contract language. Like Solidity is 99.99999% percent of the market. So just just focus on this. In the past, at some point, we had some interest around Viper, but it's completely dead now. Now it's just Solidity. Uh, Sun Jun Lee, you're the best true pioneer. Thank you. Thanks, man. Um, Psychedelic Wizard, what do you think about Convex Finance? Um, I haven't checked this project. Uh, Matthew, um, I feel so too. Motoko is a good second language. I, I don't know this. Um, Constantin, okay, thanks for the answer. Interested in Kadano as well. Have a nice day. Uh, thanks, man. Um, Hisham, I will check it. Thanks for the info. Uh, Constantin, is your DAP30 course still available or is it too much deprecated and is not actual today? Uh, it's still... It's still very much uh, a valid because uh, solidity. M most of the most of what you learn in the course, you can still use it today. Uh, I'm actually about to update uh, DAP30. Um, if you want the link, you can send me an email at Julian at uh, idoblocks.com. Uh, the link is in the description. All right, guys. So I'm going to copy paste one last time the link to the uh, the live training of tomorrow on the smart contract audits. It's going to be at 11 p.m. Uh, UTC plus eight. You can book your seat now. Okay, guys. Um, thanks for coming tonight. A lot of people, a lot of questions. I love it. Uh, have a great week and see you soon on Eat the Blocks. Bye, guys. Have a great week. Bye, 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 bye.